Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's a pleasure. My name is Marco Pasalia. I am a Swiss entrepreneur active in the commodity business, but I'm also a Swiss politician. You know, in Switzerland, we have the privilege to be, uh, let's say, okay, active in, in business, but also uh, we are, we can be politician, I would say, as a hobby. So um, today I also am trying to be a moderator. I'm trying to do my best to really uh, try to, to pick up really uh, the most interesting and added value information from our panelists. But I'm sure it's going to be very, very interesting. Cybersecurity. We have been listening to all uh, main discussion about cybersecurity as a, I mean, as user of, of, uh, of uh, every instrument, technological instrument that we have. Um, as company, we always uh, uh, can read the information about cybersecurity, how our or how we are not aware of uh, cybersecurity, and sometimes I even got the impression that it's a kind of a, a sexy topic. Good to talk about that, but is it a real topic? Is it a, a, a real problem? Let, let, let's start from uh, Paolo, Paolo, uh, because we talked about that many times. Please. So uh, I think we, we must be completely aware that, uh, you know, many times we are speaking of cyber, cyber security, cyber threat as a, something very far away from us in the real life. But you have to think that someone maybe in this moment is reading the email together with you. you. Some of you are reading emails in this moment or writing messages. Someone is in parallel with you, perhaps, or is reading in, uh, with your name, in your name to your customer in order to make them pay in another place. You know, these things are continuously happening, or perhaps is convincing one of your employees exactly in this moment to give him the access to his computer and therefore to the network of your company. Or to go further, they can stop your production tomorrow morning or something like that. So uh, we cannot say anymore that is not that is something uh, far away from us. And you, you, you read continuously uh, incident on uh, on the on the on the papers and on the on the media on the TV and so on, and uh, we cannot even say that we can rely just on technologies to solve this problem. It's not enough to buy one more firewall, one more my, one more uh, advanced system in order to. You must be continuously aware, you must continuously test your systems like uh, military exercises in order to be sure that you are at the maximum possible level of defense. But you also, like, uh, you, you must figure out cyber, cy cyber defense exactly like in the physical world. So here, you, you, if, you, if you walk around Davos in these days, you you see and not see many, ma many security people, many police, many military. Many of them you don't see. Perhaps they are also inside here, but you don't see them. So you must continually monitor in order to understand as, as, as early as possible the enemy uh, moves. This is the only way to really defend. And we have to share information altogether. This is, I, I wanted just to put Hello. something to introduce. You, you agree? I mean, you're, you have not been working in this field during the last uh, three decades, more or less, as you were telling me, for nothing. I mean, <laughs> it's a real problem. Does anyone truly think it isn't? I mean, <laughs> all you have to do is look at the, the headlines on almost a daily basis, right? And the breaches appear to be getting larger and larger and the level of sophistication much more advanced, despite the immense investments and the amount of development that has gone into building security systems. And so uh, I think it's unquestionable this is a big issue. This is probably a, as big as an issue as global warming, if we really look at 
uh, things that may affect our lives because cybersecurity crimes are being performed at the state level, at the personal level, at the corporate level, at the individual level, uh, and, and the results are, are, are there. You know, we, we read about them every day. Um, I think if we look at what has happened um, in the last 20 years or so with, the, with technology, and, and this is an interesting point that I'd like to, to throw out, which goes to the heart of, you know, how serious is it, what can we do about it? Um, you know, we've built bigger firewalls, more encryption. We've had some level of awareness and education, and you touched on a good point. This cannot be solved along by, by technology, right? Cybersecurity interferes and interfaces with all kinds of other systems, so there has to be a slightly different architectural approach. And this is sort of what I've uh, started working on in the last uh, year or so, is, you know, what are we doing differently? Right? Einstein's definition of of, uh, of stupidity or, or is, is you keep doing the same thing over and over and you expect a different result. I mean, this is the cybersecurity industry of which we're all a part of. I'm sorry to say that. And so a new approach or new approaches is, uh, are required. And these are the things that, uh, you know, forums like this are fantastic because they open up the discussion. They allow different perspectives. On this panel, there are people here from all walks of life. Mine is Silicon Valley, it's security, it's IoT, it's uh, fog computing. So a broader perspective, but there are people here from the industrial realm. And so if we look at where we need to go, I think it's a combination of, again, you alluded to, it's technology, it's architecture, but it's also policy, it's education. It's a combination of things. But more importantly, we need to do things differently. And what I mean by that, if I just may use a small example that was uh, apparent here yesterday. Um, so we're used to, uh, to equate to the physical world, uh, this building was secure yesterday, but if you were all here when the Prime Minister was here, he had added levels of security following him around. The same needs to apply. We need to start securing data. So in essence, wherever that data traverses to, whatever that data goes to, that data is inherently secure. Today we secure perimeters. We apply levels and layers of security, but in between, within, that data is inherently insecure. We, we come back on that. On that. I think it's, it's a very interesting topic to, 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 to be deep in, but do think differently. Isn't it just a matter of, uh, of education, uh, Alessandro? Education, educating people, educating employees, educating managers. Yes, uh, absolutely. I firmly believe that cyber security is changing, is changing completely. We are moving from a Star Trek uh, scenario, which where uh, cyber security is perceived something like uh, installing uh, antivirus, configuring uh, firewalls, moving forward to Star Wars environment, where human beings uh, collect and uh, acquire a, a, huge, a huge importance in terms of analyze the problem, predict a kind of problem in terms of security and cyber security. We have to change our cultural behavior uh, because uh, otherwise uh, everyone in, in the business, in the academy, in the society, in the new upcoming digital society just put money, invest or perceive cyber security as a cost and not as an investment. But when something happens, some incident happens, I'm coming from the digital forensics environment, from academy, but I'm the head of the lab, the first lab in Switzerland, which provides scientific collaboration to the Swiss Federal Court. So we are from academy, but we touch the real problem coming when something happens real on the ground. So we have to change our cultural perception. What I mean, it's very simple. If I ask you, are you able right here, right now, to share your log file that you have in your smartphone, in your server, in your uh, uh, computer that you have at home or in your car, in order to uh, uh, share with other people your experiences, your real data, in order to aggregate a huge amount of data in order to analyze this kind of data, in order to define the new strategies to improve uh, the prediction and the strategies for uh, defending uh, critical infrastructures or uh, devices that will be, through the IoT, distributed in the digital society. So we have to change our approach. That's very, very important. So, Carlos, we could also say that from uh, uh, the point of view uh, of uh, politicians, 
I, I could talk about my experience in the parliament talking about uh, uh, cyber security is like uh, <laughs> talking about nothing for, for most of them. But okay, politician, decision makers, uh, governments, could we say that there is not yet perception, awareness of, of uh, this important topic? Yeah, if you don't mind, I would like to bring this panel to another dimension, uh, which I think is the uh, intention of Davos. Uh, Yesterday, during the uh, Wyski event, uh, I brought uh, Brad Smith, uh, which is the uh, Chief Legal Officer of Microsoft, and is working on the Geneva Convention on Cybersecurity. Uh, we announced together with uh, Cisco, uh, uh, Cloudflare, and a uh, few other, uh, 60 other technology companies in the world, all the leading companies of the world, what we call the cybersecurity tech core. So the, the, the tech core, it's a very powerful movement and it started uh, a year ago in making Geneva the uh, cybersecurity convention on the enableability of using cybersecurity as a weapon. So uh, as you remember in the um, 47th, all the governments of the world signed an agreement not to use weapons against each other to destroy each other. So that has ruled the world for nearly uh, 60 years and more. And, and we are doing basically the same now on cybersecurity. So the problem, look, I was the chief security officer of the UN. I've been on cybersecurity in my life. The problem of cybersecurity is the same problem Americans have with uh, weapons. If they are available, people are going to use it because cybersecurity as a weapon can be used to gain power, money, and influence. So there's absolutely no way that you guys are going to know everything that you're going to be protected. There is absolutely no way to be protected. The only way to be protected is to put regulation on cybersecurity companies like Wiseki or Microsoft or uh, any of those big signatories, then they are not going to sell their products to hostile government or hostile companies that are going to use those products against each other. So there's a moratorium on the use of cybersecurity weapons. Otherwise, we're going to destroy each other. I mean, the internet has been already compromised. All your mobile phones are being compromised. All your emails have been compromised, and all the data you have in your organization have been compromised. So it's a total illusion to think that you're going to add security and you're going to be able to defend that. We have to do a reset on cybersecurity. And the only way we can do a reset is to stop in companies that produce cybersecurity as why is key. You know, we produce encrypt funds, we protect the e-voting project in Geneva, we do cybersecurity for criminal court of justice, we do the UN cybersecurity. Imagine if I use my technology to sell it to uh, weapons uh, dealers, to drug dealers, to uh, dark web uh, transactions. So this is what we need to focus in Davos. Uh, this is not, Davos is not a technology-only uh, environment. It's an environment where policies and agreements are set so everybody comply. So I strongly recommend you guys to look at the uh, Tech Accord, Cybersecurity Tech Accord, and join us to make sure that we are not going to use our cybersecurity weapons as a mass destruction. That's, that's the focus. In what concerns governments, needs to be educated. Swiss government is by far by far not the best one on cybersecurity. We have the digital Switzerland, which is, uh, it, it has tried to put some kind of process as becoming like a PR stunt. Uh, Switzerland has a big deficit on cybersecurity, which is actually a big problem because we are handling uh, banks and we are handling financial institutions, international organizations. Actually, I organized the uh, blockchain event in Geneva uh, where we launched the uh, Glo Glo uh, Blockchain Center of Excellency. Uh, and the idea is actually to uh, bring all to work together. The only way we're going to solve the cybersecurity problem is by cooperating and having a very clear agenda on what we are trying to achieve. Otherwise, we're going to be talking about uh, infiltration, data loss, identity theft. But, but this is like uh, people having uh, symbols and they are sick. You know, it's like having fever or sneezing. That's not the problem. The problem is where are the causes? And there where we have to go to the causes. That's a good point, thanks. I, I, I think that that's also a little bit the, the spirit of, uh, of um, uh, WEF, of, uh, of Davos, and also about, about um, a, a more global discussion on, on uh, 
specific specific topics. But at the end of the day, I also, as an entrepreneur, must say that uh, talking about that, I'm also pretty concerned about uh, the security of, of my company, of what's uh, going on, of what could be the, the, the threat, let, let's say, in terms of uh, uh, really, I sometimes have the, the, the awareness when I talk to, to other colleagues uh, in other sectors and, and so on that there is really no idea about the, 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 the threats that, that, that we can have. Do you agree with me, uh, Elena? Um, regarding what exactly? Yeah, the, 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 the problems of, uh, let's say, how cyber, how much cybersecurity can impact on, on, on companies? Well, I think it's the question of life and death, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. Um, you know, it, it doesn't only impact businesses, but uh, it impacts human life. Um, there is a very real example. Uh, not so long ago, uh, one of the neurosurgeons was performing a brain surgery in Siberia, in one of the cities, and uh, the hospital was hacked, and the electricity went off, and all systems went down, and uh, Sberbank, uh, where I work, received a desperate plea for help. Um, our specialist flew, you know, the patient uh, survived, you know, the systems were restored, but what kind of, um, you know, what kind of meanness, uh, aggression, uh, senseless, you know, the hacker could have to attack the hospital uh, where the patients can lose their lives. So this is not just about the corporate um, survival. This is about human life. And we are very, very close to cyber uh, security risks uh, and threats to becoming, you know, crossing the red line and becoming cyber terrorism. It's about life, you were saying. It's also about critical infrastructure, Pascal, isn't it? Yes, <coughs> yes Pascal, absolutely. And uh, the, <coughs> the aviation industry was yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The aviation industry was the industry who invented the payment card. So we were the first, you know, long time ago on this, on this new world. And uh, if you look at today, we are also the first that also has to address cybersecurity because here we are talking about the safety of the aircraft. We are not only talking about the personal data that you have to, you know, your data when you are booking a flight, but with all the connected aircraft. We have also, we are talking about safety. And uh, one of the points that uh, was brought is that it's not, only it's not only technology. It's about people, it's about organization. And if you look at the history of safety in the aviation industry, is to build the system in a, in a way they are re resilient. So for example, every connected system in an aircraft, the pilot will have to learn how to pilot the aircraft without this system. So there is a resilience principle that we should adopt actually everywhere in our, in our business, so not only in the aviation industry, that, okay, if something is connected to something, it can be hacked. And so the pilot or the person driving the business, we has to learn how to, you know, to keep the, 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 uh, the, the safety of, of the, the aircraft or the, of the, the, the business, if we're talking about an hospital, without you know, uh, having access to this uh, system. And what we said before, it's not only uh, a technology tool that you will buy, it's about organization, it's about doing some rehearsal, it's about doing some simulation. For example, at the moment, we have some airlines, they are taking their pilot into simulators and they are, they are learning how to pilot an aircraft that has been that has been attacked, one of the avionic systems, you know, has been has been compromised. And I'm not saying that it's happening. I'm saying that because there is a high level of segmentation in the aviation industry. But anyway, even if we believe that the probability of this to happen is very low, we still need you know to train the people how to react to that. So this resilience you know principle that has been at the basis of the design of the aircraft, we are taking this into also the design of the connected system that are, you know, uh, you know used in, in our industry and that we should do the same in all the industry, whether it is power grid, electrical supply, whether it is, you know, cars that are connected also. 
So we can say that, uh, I mean, for, from a certain point of view, uh, 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 what is what is the, the real problem is that on the other side, on the dark side, we, we have crime, we have even uh, terrorism, we have uh, a cyberspace that is becoming also a space for, for this kind of uh, uh, bad things. Uh, what do you think, Matteo? Yeah. You work on that, actually. Yeah. We need to think that uh, cyber threats are not static. They evolve over time, they evolve over space, and it's so difficult to keep up to this kind of evolution. And it's the evolution of this kind of threats is triggered by the availability of new information and communication technologies, the internet, new services, and so they change. And it's quite difficult also to understand the level of this change and to keep track of this change. Recently, just to make a, um, a, an example, several representatives of the cybersecurity community have started talking about a new global threats, not entirely new, but they refer to the interplay, the connections among cyber criminals and terrorists. Connections, linkages, interplays, and the type of threat that they can pose can be even higher. But they started also talking and naming this kind of interplay as the nexus, the cybercrime nexus. But what exactly is this nexus? There are different uh, uh, ways to interpret this nexus. You can have cybercriminals that can adopt, uh, engage in terrorist activities. For example, imagine a distributed denial of service is an attack that is used perhaps to extort some money, but the, 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 the main goal is also to spread terror, to, 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 to spread fear. You can also have terrorist individual or individual groups that they engage in criminal activities for fundraising. Then you can have also cooperation, collaboration between separate cyber criminals, criminal organization, and terrorists. Also, the, the phenomenon of cyber crime as a, as a service. It's not that far the idea that you can have terrorist organization hiring cyber criminals to carry out some attacks also to critical infrastructures. And then you can also think about this nexus as a kind in terms of transformation, when you can have criminal organization that they can evolve and they can also become hybrids. They can also engage in terrorist activities. Thank also to the availability of new technologies. Before we talk about blockchain. And blockchain is a very succulent also plate for uh, terrorists, not only for the fundraising, but also for, yes, for moving capitals, or just think about blockchain as, as a tool to share information peer-to-peer, -to, -peer, to share plans, to share uh, trainings to, to other terrorists. So this is evolving. And uh, in order to keep up with that, there is also a specific need of having more data and more knowledge of what is going on. What does it mean? More technologies that can be used to gather this data. All the stakeholders should be involved. And I totally agree with what was said that. You have different institutions, starting from the public institution to the civil society, that they should collaborate also in this. It's key, right? Yes, All yes, right. it's key, it's key. And, and then also, what is really needed, in my point of view, and this is really a hype, trust, information sharing and trust. How you build trust is not that easy. But you have to think that criminals, terrorists, and other cyber threat actors, they collaborate. And unless the, the, the cybersecurity stakeholder, they don't also push for, have more, for having more info sharing, it will be difficult also to keep up with that. This is my point. On, on, on trust, uh, I will go back, but, uh, 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 but I would like to, to uh, more technologies, more stakeholders involved. Carlos. Yeah, just to back on this point, I think it's very important what you just said. Um, you have to understand that cybersecurity uh, for criminals is a business. Business, they use cybersecurity, crypto weapons to attack and get a benefit. So it's a very, very big business. Cybersecurity companies do not have a cybersecurity business. What they do is to sell products. So it's different. They don't get any commissions on the benefit of that product. Where the criminals do get commissions. If you 
in the dark web, you download a, 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 a piece of hacking software and that software doesn't work, you get paid back. It's like an eBay. Uh, it's extraordinarily well organized. I don't know if you guys have visited the dark web, but the dark web is starting or organized. It's much better organized than any other cybersecurity defense strategy. And the reason is because there is a business. The, the cybersecurity business now is $5 trillion. This is seven times Apple, $5 trillion on which already only on illicit trade, which is one of the uh, cyber security major threats, is already $1.5 trillion. Everything is, all, all the watches that you buy, the fake things that you buy, they are fitting the bank accounts of these guys. So it is absolutely a, a fight which is not equal because they are sharing data, they are using, and data is the oil of the digital economy. So more data those cyber attacks have, better and more sophisticated attacks they're gonna make. Whether in the other side, the good guys are not sharing data. If you go to Microsoft and you go to Apple, and they go, oh, no, this data is mine because that has commercial value. So we are in a situation where we have to teach the good guys to share data, use artificial intelligent algorithms, then we'll be able to analyze this data and then be in a situation where we can shut down the criminal underworld on cybersecurity. There is absolutely possible to be done, but needs collaboration, needs standardization, and needs to be less selfish. So cybersecurity companies cannot only think in themselves by saying, oh, we're gonna sell billions of dollars by selling my products, by, because by the way, some of those products are ending in the cyber world. So there is absolutely a, a, a necessity, and I fully agree this will be the focus on the cybersecurity cooperation to share data, to share hacks, to share alerts, to create an early warning system on attacks so people will know who has been attacked and why and where is the, 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 the consequences. And by the way, I, I wrote a book about the called the transhuman code. This is how the human body acts. If we get fever and we get attacked by a virus, the cells immediately transfer data to the other cells in a peer-to-peer -peer environment. So everybody, everything in your body gets ready to defend the attack. You don't have one cell that says, no, I'm gonna keep all the data, I'm not gonna inform anybody, right? So this is the, uh, we have in our biology the best design for cybersecurity, we just need to adapt it. Carlos, you anticipated me. I wanted to quote that, but that's <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's okay. Pascal. Yeah, yes, you I wanted, just wanted to yeah, add please. something: is that it's about the trust that the customer is putting in your organization. And many business, if we are losing the trust of our customer, we are out of business. And so it's not only a trust; it's really a to to keep and to show to the customer also that you deserve the trust that is put in, in, in your business. And uh, I see very often about you know, a collaboration and sharing information that in many organizations, their legal departments are coming to them saying, no, no, you cannot share information because you, uh, this will create some problem. And I think that we need to change the mindset of everybody. It's, is by sharing information that we are going to mitigate the risk, and the ones that are not sharing information are probably the ones that are at risk. Yes. You know, everybody has been hacked. The difference is that there are people who know they have been hacked, and so they can mitigate the risk, and people who don't know. And so the company, and when the legal department are advising the company, oh no, don't disclose anything, don't say anything, in, very, in the very near future, people, will, the, the customer, they will not believe a company saying, no, no, we are safe. No. And they will believe tomorrow a company saying, yes, we are continuously monitoring and continuously detecting what's happening, and we are sharing with all you know, our partners in order to mitigate the risk. Yeah, Pardon? yeah I, I think we, we, we have to work, as was said, but I want to, to, to highlight this. So uh, many companies think that if they have a, a technical problem, uh, uh, first of all, they consider an, uh, a cyber attack a technical problem, not uh, uh, something that can really affect on the value of the company itself. But we have to think that if uh, more than one company is attacked in the same moment, it could be a problem of national security, or international security, or allied security, or continental security, and so on. It's, it's, it's a problem of cyber defense. It's not anymore a technical problem. And this is something that, first of all, we must, we must be able to detect and respond to the attack. So I mean, many companies, as not their internal resources, able to understand to detect a real attack. So this is something that we, 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 we must educate, we must create. You, you have read it, almost 3.5 uh, 
uh, million of cyber operator able really not just to configure a firewall, to, 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 to understand with a multidisciplinar level what is happening, because it's not just an engineer, a pure engineer, technical engineer, that can understand what is happening. He must uh, know of business, if man know of how uh, the different language, the culture, in order to understand that if the contact the company has is something really coming from that person or not. This is the, the, the threat, as was said, is very, very sophisticated. Yeah. They're working together, they're cooperating really to win. And we are far away from this level, from the defense point of view. Let me come back, Heller, with you on, on, on the, the concept of, of trust, because we were talking, yes, the, the, the importance of human factor. And, and there is also a matter of, of uh, on the one side, we want confidentiality on our data, but on the other side, there is a lack of trust. <laughs> How can we cope with that? So that, that's, that's an interesting challenge. But before I go there, I, mean, yeah, I just want to echo that I think we all, I think we're all seeing the same things. And this is definitely has to be a multifaceted approach on all sides. But I still strongly think that security has to be more highly automated, more highly integrated into artificial intelligence systems. Because if, if at the end, despite all the efforts to train people and force people into having sound policies, if your security system is based on human behavior, it's doomed to fail, one way or another. It's doomed to fail. And so I think technology still plays a big role in all of this, from the perspective of more automation, more integration into other aspects of technology. So in essence, as I said earlier, a different approach versus what we've been doing for the past 20 years. Of course, to your point, all of this has to be weighed when you look at uh, confidentiality. And, and so again, there are ways to anonymize data. There are ways to architect these systems so that there is levels of protection that don't apply the same way to all, right? So from that perspective, um, I know this is a big struggle, the confidentiality versus true security, but if we look at the balances and what that brings to society, a couple of uh, case points were brought up of what is in essence cyber terrorism today. I mean, we we're talking about autonomous vehicles, vehicles that interact with intelligent traffic systems, systems that interact with people's pacemakers and other medical devices. So at what point do we, you, do we all look at and say, well, maybe I do need to give up a little bit of my privacy, a little bit of my independence to ensure that this system is inherently more comprehensively secure. So it's a fine balance. I don't think any of us has the answer to that question. But I do think, as everyone here has you know, rightfully highlighted, this has to be an approach on multiple fronts. And policy plays a big role. But as a technologist, I think technology plays a big Last role. Last opinion on that with Alessandro. And then we just go ahead to, to yeah. that kind of different topics. Yes, yeah. I, I totally agree with uh, what my colleagues said. But I would like to stress the, the cyber education perspective because we need to bring uh, out uh, all researchers from their lab and uh, create the good condition where they can uh, communicate the status of the art, the complexity of technologies to CEOs, to law enforcement agencies, otherwise will uh, we'll, we'll still uh, remain in the never running uh, story because uh, attackers they just send one email and they have two billion users one uh, phishing email they just have uh, two billion users and they are able to collect big data someone sends money someone does an answer which is a feedback someone say ah, you are a, a fraud i don't answer you which is a feedback but from defensive point of view if you are not able to communicate from researchers and uh, businesses, CNO and law enforcement agencies, we are not able to collect big data, real big data, in order to improve strategies for uh, uh, defense, to moving from uh, prevention to prediction, which is the real uh, interesting topic. I think that we, we could maybe sum up, sorry for, for being a little bit, maybe, uh, let's say, pragmatic, but uh, uh, more technologies, more stakeholders to be involved, more um, um, sharing information. I think it's interesting now to, to have a look at what a, uh, a leading 
bank worldwide, uh, like um, uh, Sberbank is, is doing, um, a bank uh, which is very active in, in, uh, in uh, cyber security and uh, which is very, uh, let's say, in line with uh, what are the developments. And that's why I, I ask uh, to Jelena Tepliskaya also to give us, uh, just in, in, in a few slides, it's not uh, that easy to, to summarize that, but to give in, in a short presentation an idea about what they are doing. I'm sure that a few concepts will be also uh, somehow uh, sum up the, the, what, what you said. Is it on? Uh, just a second. Okay, we, we have it. Um, we all discussed, you know, the threats, but are there any remedies? Because it's very easy to kind of, uh, you know, put our hands up and recognize that there is really not much we can do about protecting uh, our companies and protecting actually the humanity because this became a very real threat that is on the verge of, uh, you know, one of the most dangerous types of terrorism. So um, cyber attacks today are, at least according to the World Economic Forum, one of the four major global risks. Interestingly, 80% um, of attacks are concealed by corporate victims in the fear to lose clients. You have it here. Yeah. Oh, Perfect. thank you. That's for us. The power. There is an assessment that by 2022, the uh, loss from cyber crime will reach eight trillion dollars. Um, what is the cyber criminal system today? Um, it's very complex. The problem is that um, cyber. Um, uh, gangs, cyber, cyber groups are uh, spread all over the world and they don't really have to comply with any laws. And there is no eminent punishment that will follow. So therefore, uh, their appetite is growing. And as it was mentioned, um, the gray internet or the dark web supplies all kinds of instruments, basically for peanuts, for a couple of hundred dollars, uh, cyber uh, criminals can obtain the instruments that can cause billions of dollars worth in damage. Um, the the um, criminals feel um, really like it's a game for them. I would disagree respectfully that it's just about money, just about power. It's some kind of, you know, um, different, it's, it's like a drug for them because they get control. And um, it's like, you know, um, with their firearms, but uh, exponentially um, more dangerous for humanity. So. Who are the targets, the main targets? It could be banks and financial institutions, it can be companies and organizations, and more and more we are talking about people like us. And uh, speaking of protection, um, there are uh, very simple means for cybersecurity hygiene. And I'm asking you to please tell me, um, how many of you change your passwords more than once a month? So as you can see, um, okay. uh, you are <laughs> you are in minority, and this is a very simple um, hygiene measure that really can protect your data without investing, you know, um, very significant funds. Although I don't discourage, but uh, let's not forget about simple means. And uh, a lot was uh, discussed about collaboration. Usually we talk about uh, private government partnerships, but it's more and more about private entities talking to each other, uh, using best practices, collaborating. And um, as it was indicated, it's progressively more difficult because of the legal restrictions. So um, laws 
also have to be changed because the jurisdictions of the crime do not really address where the crime was committed and therefore punishment um, rarely follows the crime. So we really need to initiate a greater incentive to change the laws and collaborate not just between private entities and government but uh, also particularly with the law enforcement agencies. Um, we at Sberbank uh, created a center for cybersecurity uh, three years ago. Of course, before uh, we were taking whatever means uh, to protect, because we have about 150 million clients around the globe. We're in 22 countries, and uh, we have over 300,000 employees. So within the organization, we have significant risk to lose the data. We really had to invest very heavily, and um, exactly. we have in-house uh, thousands of engineers who are developing new technologies and uh, some of them are cutting edge. So uh, we are no longer um, utilizing this technology just for ourselves. We have about 50 um, uh, significant uh, corporate clients, but we also very actively um, work globally on all kinds of collaboration to strategize and also practically implement um, the means to defend not just ourselves, but the global community. Last year, we became one of the six co-founders of the World Economic Forum, C4C, which is Center for um, Cybersecurity. And um, we are trying to take it to a very pragmatic stage where we establish um, closer ties between the bank, between the individuals, between the corporations. And um, last year, we organized uh, probably the first global international cybersecurity congress, which was attended by over 2,000 people from over 50 countries. We will organize the Congress again in June uh, 2019. Um, you're all invited. Um, it is a very high level gathering that uh, discusses um, the, uh, the most um, important and painful issues, looking for common solutions. Because individually, we can never overcome these threats. Um, but at the same time, we shall not give up, and we shall really overcome this probably most challenging threat that we are all facing today. And I think uh, Marco for a very uh, dynamic uh, panel and uh, all the participants, because I learned a lot from you today. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Pascal, yeah. uh, after, after you tell me you're in coffee, how, how can I remind my password uh, if I change it every month? But with, 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 with you, car. You need an app. For that. <laughs> okay, you cannot do it only with. Uh, All right, thanks. You, you will tell me later, yeah. Carlos. But we, we, we go back a little bit to what you are saying of the final goal of WEF. Final goal of WEF is also to find kind of a, a, a standard, a, a multilateral uh, platform where we can really share information and we can. Please go a little, a little bit ahead on that because I think it's very important to focus on that. So, so I have been working with the uh, Global Council on Cybersecurity for the World Economic Forum for many, many years. Some of my staff has been also involved into Illicit Trade Council, Hans Schwab, which is there. And uh, th there's obviously a very big reflection on, on how, uh, with using multi-stakeholder approach, how we can bring solutions to it. But, but uh, I mean, I have been in cybersecurity since the web was created in Geneva, so, so we know the baby. I mean, we, we made it, so we know exactly the deficiencies of that baby. And that baby name is the web, the internet, right? So the internet is not secure. The internet has still a lot of issues. And, and we are conducting something like a $20 trillion economy on the top of the internet, which is an unsecure infrastructure. So, so basically, we are now in this council. It's like everybody coming to web will have to bring their own personal bodyguard. That's, that's what our security equivalent is. I mean, we have our own personal software, our own personal IT department, our own personal Sberbank department taking care of us. 
That's the current situation. That is unsustainable. I mean, imagine that everybody will have to come into Davos with a, with a bodyguard because otherwise we will kill each other. Obviously, there is a physical uh, security structure that works. I mean, nobody brings bodyguards here, and you have ministers and head of the state and CEOs walking in the street in total trust and confidence. Why? Because there is a platform around us mm. that is protecting us. There is a professional platform. Those are people that have been trained, and they are on daily basis assessing risk, and they are ultra connected and ultra sharing information. We need the equivalent on the internet. I mean, in five years' time, it will be ridiculous to say that we individually we can protect our companies with our IT guy. That, that, that will not be the case. Even a spare bank will not be able to protect themselves alone anymore because this is going so, so fast and it's getting so complex Then you need to have a protection backbone behind you. So what we are aiming to is that to create cyber security national backbones. So this is the country responsibility. Every country has the responsibility to protect their airline space. They have their the water safety, the uh, climate safety, the road safety. They have to have the same responsibility of protecting the digital safety space, which is the internet. And then bring, like we have in Switzerland, Melanie and other, and other sophisticated uh, intelligent gathering bodies that will be feeding us information real time about what are the threats are. And then you have professional companies, like many of us, Wiseke is one, but you have many in each country, you have another one, that will be helping you in the same way a doctor will help you to take care of your health or a dentist to, to take care of your teeth. You need an expert that takes care of your cybersecurity. So we are moving towards the platform effect on cybersecurity. And, and I think we are getting there, and this is actually this tech core I mentioned at the beginning, is <coughs> the beginning because at least you're bringing uh, uh, something like a $20 trillion digital Company and cybersecurity working together and say, hey, let's let's forget for a moment just making money of objects. Let's work together so we can defend national infrastructure. So this is where we are leading towards, and I think this is a good news. Matteo, your academic view on that? Yeah, more than an academic view, I would like to bring uh, a concrete experience okay. that I was contributing, because uh, I'm involved in this project that is um, sponsored by the Association of Foreign Banks Switzerland. Foreign banks based here. They are not national critical infrastructures. They don't have access to Melani reporting. But still, they perceive, they, they, they uh, are so aware that they need to collaborate, they need to share, that they decided to promote this initiative and create an information sharing platform. Again, trust, because again, you have the, the issue of trust. But trust, it should be a step-by-step -step process. You can start with inner circles of trust, and if the sharing of information works for the parties in these inner circles, then you can also scale up. So what I, what I, I really think is that information sharing is paramount. You need the platforms, you need the, 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 the systems, and you need also the people willingness to, to do that, to contribute with data, even if they are afraid of exposing their assets, their credibility, but by sharing, you will see the positive effect, the added value, the more, the, more, the more you share, and the more you are able to build this global structure, infrastructure that can protect the people that are navigating the internet. This is my, my yeah. opinion. Hey, we, we all know what must be done, what uh, decision makers have to decide in, in, in this next future, as soon as I would say. But uh, I just go back to maybe my personal experience uh, as an entrepreneur, or just uh, talking about the company uh, perspective. Paolo, what, what can I do now to, 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 to defend myself, to defend my company? First of all, you, you must have in process uh, a, a cybersecurity program. So you are not doing penetration tests, you are not doing uh, social engineering exercise, you are not doing, you are not monitoring the company. So these are processes that you cannot avoid anymore. Anymore must be inside, like having the the, 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 the light inside the inside the company or the, the or the connection to the internet. Moreover, I have to say uh, that we have to build up a network, a confederate, confederated network of regional cyber defense center PPP uh, build up. Uh, coordinated by the national cyber defense infrastructure uh, because we have to be uh, very near to the territory in order to have this trust. Yeah. Otherwise, you will look at the cyber military command like something very, very far away from you. 
as the, po the, as the police infrastructure come into the territory, so this is the, 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 the real same way. So there must be a cooperation. As here, the bodyguard of the minister is connected to the yeah. main uh, uh, cyber, uh, <laughs> the main physical security of the boss. Yep. So this is something that we cannot avoid anymore. This is the only way. Pascal, do you agree with Paolo? Yes, I, I agree with him, but I would say also uh, that don't also expect too much from authorities because it is difficult for them also to keep yeah. the pace. And cyber security is one yep. of the subjects where the law enforcement people, they are not able to solve the problem themselves. And this That's is why that they need a very deep and close, and I'm saying international collaboration, because when you have an airline flying from uh, the US to Europe, you need a collaboration not only at the nation level, but you need well, an international sure. collaboration. So this is the first time that the, the law enforcement, they are not capable to solve the problem. And they are not capable even to understand what is the problem. And it is why that we have to collaborate between industry, between uh, authorities, public, and also research, academy. Yeah. Everybody has to, has to, work, together. Has to yeah. work together. Because the civil you know, society we are, as well. Yeah. We are, in a way, we are, we, are, we are stupid. We are making the, the job easy for the hackers. The hackers, they are sharing information at you know, the, the speed of light. And we, when we want to share information, we have our little department say, no, no, don't share information because it is bad for the reputation of the company. So this is the problem that we have. We have to act much more, to act much more faster because at the moment we are not, you know, catching up with the hackers. The hackers, they are more innovative than us. They are doing faster. And we are always looking at what happened yesterday. And we are not working on what will happen tomorrow. And remember that we're going to put more te technology in everywhere. You will have robotics everywhere, you will have artificial intelligence, but you, you will have also the, you know, genetic also engineering. Yep. So I even, even you know, the, 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 the biological people could be act as well tomorrow. Elena, please. I would like to add um, one more aspect. I think we haven't touched the um, urgent need to educate law enforcement officials in the technicalities of the issues they have to deal. Because we have um, a really um, growing disparity between um, their awareness, um, their uh, competences and skills and technology, and their responsibility to deal with the um, most complex technological crimes that uh, are occurring today. So I think we really need to assist with the proper education of uh, law enforcement agencies and those um, uh, departments and individual officials who are charged with this mission, uh, hopefully possible, not impossible. I would like to uh, advise Pascal, Pascal, we, It varies from countries to countries. This is the point. Uh, Carlos, uh, yeah. We already touched cross-border, but education, because sometimes they cannot tell the server from, I don't know, uh, uh, any uh, other just, piece of Carlos, ju just to bring that to a very concrete point, uh, I think in this panel we have the solution. The solution is IATA. The, the most safe industry in the world is the airline industry. Mm. I mean, you, you're running thousands of airports around the world. They are interconnected because you take a plane from one to another. There, there's hundreds of thousands of planes taking off and landing every day. There is an amazing number of people getting in and out. All of them, they are batching with an authenticated identity. The uh, products they get in, they get a track, and they are inspected before they get into the board and the plane. IATA and the airline industry is one of the most secure industries in the world. Why? Because they are acting as a platform. They are acting as a platform. Speaking the same language. Uh, and they had a track yeah. record uh, mm -hmm. of, I mean, if the banks will act as IATA, we will have zero, <laughs> zero hacking. Yeah. But the problem is they don't. So cooperation as, as IATA, airports, airlines, and passengers, and cargo mm -hmm. are able to create a secure ecosystem, this is what we have to apply to other industries. Good so we are not far away from the solution. It needs cooperation. Before going back, uh, on, on also you were saying about new approach uh, with you and Alessandro. Uh, there is a question, please. Uh, hi, I'm Pavan Dugal. I'm the chairman of the International Commission on Cybersecurity Law. You talk of cooperation. Uh, there's no one international uh, cyber law or cybersecurity law in place. 
You talk of cooperation, different countries are coming up with their own national laws on cyber security. And it's like the classical case of five blind men trying to describe an elephant. China goes one way, Singapore another, and Egypt a third way altogether. So that's why at the Commission we are trying to collate common legal principles to govern regulation of cyber security. But, but how do we begin? Uh, where, where does the cooperation actually start? Because the national legislations will not be adequate to deal with these uh, multinational approaches on cyber security breaches. And more so with the advent of the dark net, we are completely at bay. So any suggestions from the panel of what can be done for regulation? Thank you. If, if I may, it's very, very interesting to, to listen to what you are uh, just were asking because uh, a couple of days ago we had um, um, another very interesting panel on WTO and I think that uh, uh, talking about other very different fields we have similar experience, experiences about uh, multilateralism, about the necessity to, 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 uh, to, to create, to sharing uh, uh, experiences, information to create a, a, a platform. But, but uh, I think we, we, we can go back maybe with Carlos and, and then also with... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, the word cyber security uh, is, is a wrong one. I, I think cyber security has to decompose into elements and for each one, and especially in India, you do have a standardization. For instance, you have a UN Central United Nations Commission for Trade Laws that handles international legislation on digital identities. India is issuing 1.3 billion digital identities and is one of the most advanced countries in the world on digital identity through the, through the uh, identification of all the cit uh, citizens. Then you have PKI, public infrastructure, creation of cryptographic national root keys. And there again is ITU, International Telecommunication Union, with X509 standard. So then, then when you move into the uh, internet cyber security, you have uh, ICANN, you have ISO standards, you have, uh, so the standards are there. What, what needs to be done, and I have been advising the Indian government for many, many years, and I have operations in India, is to bring you guys together, because in India you have about 12 ministers, and they are not yet sharing data. You know that very well. So that makes all work very difficult, because we go to India, and we see that there is still minister. And this is not only the case in India, it's the case in Switzerland as well. So ministers need to start to change data and processes so those international standards can apply into something that becomes disruptive for the country. But the standards are there. Uh, Alessandro and Pascal on this topic, and then with Heather, I would like to focus a little bit on, on the approach that you are suggesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, I think we're all in agreement from the perspective that this has to be a mul multiple uh, pronged approach and policy plays uh, a, a strong role, right? The internet works because we standardized on TCP IP. If we look at what's happening in IoT with edge and fog computing, there are standards being developed. And when I talk about standards, the standards apply not just to the technology, but also to the overall overarching architecture in terms of policies. So it covers all of the above. But I, I still think, you know, this, was, this mess was created by technology, right? The World Wide Web is inherently insecure because it's the way it was designed. So technology also has to play a big role in solving some of its own problems. And this is where, again, if we look at different methodologies, different ways to secure data. So we, we talk a lot about securing networks, <coughs> securing devices. So what if we start focusing on securing data, data sets, so that in essence that data travels, it's inherently secure, no matter what networks it traverses to. These are the types of concepts that I think we need to start looking at and we start uh, experimenting with. You know, uh, my company is working very closely, Department of Homeland Security with NASA and other uh, government agencies on these very same uh, concepts. And I, I invite you all to look at globaldatasentinel.com. Uh, uh, look at it. If you have any questions, shoot us any questions. And this is my point about we need different approaches, different perspectives. I spent 10 years embedding network security protocols into Cisco's routers and switches. So I, I know the old world very well. And if we keep doing more of the same, more of the same approach, the end result was, will be the same, even with the best policies in place. And so this is why I think it has to be a combination of all these factors. Different approaches, Alessandro? Uh, yes, I, I think this, this is a very important topic. It's the difference between a winner and a loser because we can say a lot of words but the reality says that uh, attackers they do not need uh, standards they do not need best practices they do not need sharing data they do not need nothing know each other they want to make business and they are doing very well and I think uh, but I want to be provocative we are not very close to the solution we are we are very close we are very motivated to 
identify a kind of common solution, but the problem has a huge of complexity. If you try from the ground to uh, work with the law enforcement agency between Lugano and Zurigo, which are belonging to the same country, you will find a lot of problems because everyone doesn't want to share data, experiences, cases, real cases. So you have to start from this real point in order to build a potential solution. But that is the difference between a winner, cyber criminals, and a loser. That's the point. Sorry to be very pragmatic, Pascal, but yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, it's also a matter of cost, because as politicians, I have also to care about allocation of, co of resources, and <laughs> it, it's a cost That's for a company, point. it's a cost for government, it's a cost for uh, the community. Yes, and... Uh, very quick, yeah, it's, and, it's, and then... Think about the cost of losing the trust of your citizens also, it's bigger <laughs> than everything else. I just want to answer to you and to give you the, the example of what we IATA we do with ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization. We have standards that has, been, that has been pushed to all the civil aviation authorities in the world. These standards are international standards. So now in the certification of the aircraft, we are introduced penetration testing. Yes. And now if you want to release a new aircraft that is connected, it means that okay, the OEM, the, the manufacturer, will have to run pen tests with the Civil Aviation Authority and to, and to show that you know, the, the, the aircraft is resilient. Security. So little by little, by using the international organization, in this case it is the UN agency, okay, we are pushing regulations that are mandatory. If you want to fly an aircraft, it has to be certified. Carlos and Paolo, it's a matter of cost. I have a question actually for you and a recommendation because you're working with the uh, Swiss government or you're at parliament. Is one of the problems we have in cybersecurity is nations are not investing enough in cybersecurity. So we are at the same time we're trying to solve a big problem, but we are not empowered the people than they are actually doing solving the problem. Here in Switzerland, we are sitting on something like $1 trillion for BNS, and BNS actually invests money into <laughs> Facebook and, uh, and American Apple companies rather to invest money on companies like Wisekey, which are, we are listed on the Swiss security stock market. <laughs> so until that is not changed, what is going to happen is, well, we're going to still be small vis-a-vis -vis of a huge problem without having the capability of doing it. Now, who says Switzerland, says France, says Germany. I mean, we are selling our companies, cybersecurity companies, to Americans and now to Chinese. So in five to 10 years' time, Europe will not have any cybersecurity companies, including Switzerland, if we're not able to fight the, 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 the war. So, so those problems, those are basic architectural problems that can only be, through the parliament, raised and say, guys, stop to feeding money to uh, social media, which are addicting young guys and, and creating a, a stupid economy, and put that money on people, then they are solving real critical issues. So this is an ask for you to bring to the parliament. I help you in doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm laughing for that. I'm not here to, to, to raise votes, but I can tell you that I'm very active on that. There are several oh, yes. parliamentary acts on that signed by me, and so I'm very active on that. I believe in what you just said, and I think we have a lot to do in Switzerland, but all, all around the world. Hello? If I may add one quick point to that, this is a very important point. Also from an education perspective is the world has a shortage of cybersecurity professionals. Yeah. Over two to three million shortage of cybersecurity professionals. So this is an excellent opportunity to incentivize at a government level young people to get into something that can be productive to society. That's also one of my points. Paolo. Yeah, uh, so. Uh, on, on cost. Oh, sorry. On cost, yeah, please. On cost, of course. So, uh, so we, we have to think the cost of non, non acting. This is the point. So, we, we have to understand that uh, with the increase of the tax, we are completely compromising our assets. This is the point. We cannot think that, okay, I spare, I want to spare on cybersecurity. I'm not spending this year, next year, next year, ne until something happens. But this is completely stupid because we, the, our life will be destroyed. So we, 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 we really have to, to, to act, to put the money really on this partnership, public-private, because it is the only way to put the best resources we have in money and in and, 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 and mind from from private and and, and, and academy and in institution and uh, and law enforcement and intelligence and so on because this is the only way it's a practical way not only 
continues to write strategies not acting in the, in the field. We <laughs> ma we ma so the intelligence of the military is now it's completely in the field. The platoon has its sound intelligence that feed the global the, 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 the central intelligence. This is the way. No other, no other solution. Heller, and then I, I go back to Yelena for uh, Thank very you. precise just, question. Just one short data point that goes to the heart of this discussion, which is, again, there are efforts underwear to actually put the burden at the board level, at the company board level, to ensure that companies are taking adequate cybersecurity measures, right? So, so from that perspective, this is another aspect of where government can play a very strong role and ensure that companies are adequately protected with cyber insurance and things of that nature. And, and what are you doing, Yelena? So, uh, it's more it's more investment than a cost focusing on on cyber security um, you are uh, alluding to the bear bank or me yeah, personally well the bear bank actually um, is 177 years old and uh, it is always perceived, and it used to be perceived as a sperkassa. And I think today we are the IT company with the banking license. So this is what we are doing. And uh, within the scope of our technological transformation, first of all, we converted ourselves into an ecosystem of which our cybersecurity ecosystem is the cornerstone of our operation. Because even though uh, the uh, Center for Cybersecurity that exists within the bank was formed three years ago, we indeed invested a lot uh, you know, for years. But right now, it's really um, going beyond um, our core operation. It's our everything. So we train our employees. I myself have to go through regular training, which is entitled Cyber Security Agent, because we really don't have to be afraid. We have to act. And we educate, you know, I really can't agree more with the um, lack of professionals. We realized that our employees who are working in cybersecurity graduated from uh, about 100 um, um, universities and institutions. We really need to consolidate this knowledge. We need to establish international collaboration between the universities that prepare, uh, you know, the cutter uh, for um, the uh, industry. So, and of course, we invest in technologies, we invent new technologies, and we share. So this is pretty much what we do. Thank you. And we're very active in the World Economic Forum, uh, C4C. We have time for a couple of questions. I'm uh, in the innovation process, and you may think that my question could be provocative, but I'm paid to think different and to find solutions. <coughs> the question is, um, uh, is it possible to create a new design without security problem, cyber security problem, uh, like the blockchain or the, uh, the Bitcoin or the, all the open uh, source program we have? You participate in this business because without cyber security, you are out of job. <coughs> Your message that I heard is based on fear. It's exactly like the army, the same wording. And we know that with the army, you can have a lot of money. More technology means more, com it's more complicated. Uh, and you say, I don't know how many times, 100 times the word business. For me, it's simply show that this, you will not solve these issues because it's a casino and all the people can make tons of money. Therefore, you are in a dead hand. You mentioned also the civil aviation and the, all the standardization. And we saw what happened with two, two drones. Therefore, the civil aviation is also in dead end. But yes. my question is, Most is it possible to create a new design without security problems <coughs> and to fully change the paradigm? And in your answer, please don't put fear and don't put the word business. Thank you. We love provocations. I think the, ma the main message was more based on uh, lack of perception from my point of view. Alessandro on that. Yes, and then uh, my, my answer will be very honest. I think yes, but the only way to do it is to think and use uh, 
or, or consider security not in terms of technicality, but in terms of behavior. Inside your company, you have to uh, share, to, to uh, uh, communicate from top to the bottom and vice versa, a new kind of perception in terms of security. You don't have to put your secretary to configure a, a, a antivirus or something like this, but you have to, day by day, because it's a process, in this term, you can, day by day, month by bond, a, uh, year by year, you can distribute and, and share a new kind of philosophy within the business, because security is not a matter of technicality, is a matter in the whole chain, is a matter of behavior. Pascal and then Carlos. Oh. Yeah, one, <coughs> one comment, I, I'm not sure I agree with your statement. It's not a technology problem, it's a problem made by people using technology. It's different, it's a people problem, and we will solve it, you know, with people and with organization between people. So I think that this is the, the first point. And the second one is that you cannot stop the train. So it's funny from me coming from the aviation industry talking about train, but technology will move on. And you can see in many countries, you know, whether you go to China, whether you go to okay, they are, they, are, they are moving at you know, fast speed. So it's us to organize ourselves in order to make sure that the technology will not harm people, but it is people doing this, you know, like any uh, innovation, anything that has been created, you have people using it for the good, and you have also people using it for the bad. And this is where we need regulators to help us to protect people from, you know, the, the, the misuse of technology. Carlos, any, any other question in the meantime? Carlos, please. Yeah, just to say that you are right in one part, you are wrong in another part from my, from my perspective. You are, you are right that we need a new design, but it's not the blockchain, by the way, because the blockchain does not solve the cybersecurity issue. It aggravates the cybersecurity issue because of the decentralized ledger. Yeah. I think what Pascal says is the beginning of the solution of the problem is by bringing cybersecurity as a design. Means that you are embedding cybersecurity in products that then enters into secure infrastructures, whether it's in an airport, a hospital, a government. And cybersecurity as a design is actually a huge industry. Yes, there is absolutely a gain you make. You're gonna make money. I mean, we're not in a wishable thinking society, right? You have to make money because you have to create infrastructure. We are in the same situation that they were the guys in the 18th century building the rails for the train. Somebody has to build the rails and then people will make money on the train and people will make money in cargo on the train, but we don't have the rails yet. So I think cybersecurity as a design at the product level, at the process level, is the next thing to come. And blockchain will help on that because the identity decentralization, the possibility of using cryptographic root <coughs> keys, and, and that will be one, together with AI, together with IoT, together with machine-to-machine -machine interactions. But um, I, I think uh, we are entering into a new design. Uh, yes, we are in that phase. We are in what we call Web3. And we are also in what we call the fourth industrial revolution. And all things are happening here in Davos. So there is a good time to get it right by bringing all the brains together. Not only ourselves as a security expert, everybody has to participate. This is an open dialogue. And, and, and that is the only way we can get it right. Very quick, Helder and Paolo on that, and then we have the question. Uh, or, or just, we can, we can have the question, please, and then. Well, uh, I'd like to know what, what is the panel's opinion about uh, uh, a slightly different approach to security risk uh, and letting financial markets to take care of um, uh, cyber risk. Sorry, we cannot hear oh, this here. way. All right, okay. Uh, I, I wanted to know uh, the panel's opinion about uh, uh, an idea to let financial markets uh, to take care of the, of the cyber security through creation of uh, special instruments like uh, catastrophic bonds, which exist in the insurance industry. Uh, is there anything, uh, do insurance companies uh, uh, Try to do something like that. Okay, we, okay. you, you so also I, had I, I, uh, other questions, then we can uh, uh, have learned that, Paolo. Yeah, I was just to your point, and I think it's been answered. Design is everything. I'll give you a very simple concept. If you look at most operational stacks today are built with functionality in mind, and then you add security as an afterthought. We actually built a secure stack, which you now can add any functionality to it. So design is key. If you inherently build something that is secure to begin with, then you can simply add to it, and that system is secure from the ground up. Paolo? Yes, I, I just want to, to remember to you that uh, I'm not going uh, anymore into the design problem, but uh, in, uh, to, to have awareness of the, of the threat. So the threat is not just uh, a technical threat. 
we are not speaking anymore or just information information attack information security attack so coming out from uh, starting from from information point of view IT point of view and ending in IT it's something that is cyber means cyber attack means going from the from one layer to other layers so affecting people affecting the physical things go, going to critical critical infrastructure and so on so and we are the the, the threat is completely hybrid we have to look at 360 degrees and the security will be global so it means it is not just the physical security it is not just the cyber security it's not just the it security we have to look at the uh, at all the media so you have to think that the 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 most of the the successful attack use the human as a key point so the social engineering which is old like the man is continually used is an evolution of what uh, was done uh, in the in, in the in the in the old testament uh, with the with the, with the, with the snake and Eve and with the, <laughs> with, 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 the, yeah. with Troy Temptation. and so on. so it's just the same yeah. just an evolution so the human level is completely involved so we cannot relate just on technology and it's not the fault is not just the te the technological way of doing even if last even if last two questions please. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Agata Gromova. I'm from Bank Julius Baer. As you know, it's a private bank. And I know a lot about cybersecurity and attacks because, as you know, the private banks get attacked uh, every day. And uh, actually, what I learned is that the security really starts with you. We talk a lot about the um, digitalization. We talk a lot about government and to which extent it should be involved. We talk a lot about... Um, different systems right but still i think it's very personal and i would rather see it more um this way that the solution should be holistic and i'm fully with helen tepliska here i know that sberbank is doing a great job educating people so um my question is that how far this um uh, this issue lies beyond the personal responsibility because, as you said correctly, uh, the cyber attackers don't need anything, but they need one thing, the victim. That's clear. Okay, so, can I ask you a question? Do you yeah. bring your mobile phone at work at Jules Burr? I do. <laughs> In that case, you don't have the answer yet. <laughs> yes, this is why I'm asking you. So, That's where, what, what's my where strategy? human responsibility start? Never you bring a mobile phone into a private bank because you're bringing a terminal yep. into yeah. somebody else's hands. Any other questions before going ahead? Yep. We are getting another question, and then we can have final statements and uh, reply to, to the two questions. There is Please. A, over there. There, is, there. there was before this one? Okay. Hi, good afternoon, panel. Yes. So my question is, uh, uh, sorry, let me introduce myself. I'm Spandana and I'm traveling from London. I'm having my own event tomorrow about smart cities and Sunstar hotels. So my only concern is uh, we are, the, digitaliza <coughs> the digitalization is growing so rapidly. Today we are talking about 5G, tomorrow 6G. And uh, are, are the policies, are the government or you know the corporate world like you, the policies are equally rapidly growing along with the digitalization. So, uh, you know, uh, like recently there is an attack in Heathrow Airport. The drone has traveled and landed on the airport. So the drones can get anywhere, you know. So, uh, so are the policies, the risk, are we developing accordingly along with lineage with the cyber security? Thank you. And the last one, and then you can reply. The, the gentleman here. Thank you. Thank you. And then we are running out of time. You know, as, as, as a Swiss guy, I, I feel bad when we are a little bit. I feel uncomfortable. My name is Roman Lifson. I'm managing director at Catalyst Securities in New York. Um, we listened to a very insightful presentation yesterday uh, from a chief financial officer of Marriott, who had 500 million records stolen. And it's not like they don't have a budget for cybersecurity. They have a huge budget and I'm sure a set of uh, procedures. So my question to you is, will there a point in the future where um, 
cybersecurity had a uh, head start um, uh, to the to the hackers, where we, we would feel safe for a uh, for an extended period of time. And what would it take uh, to get to that point? What kind of technological advances, like quantum computing, any other technological advances, uh, to be to be safe for for some time? So just uh, I'm, I'm asking you, uh, our panelists, just to uh, as final statement, trying to, to to reply to these three questions. Not easy, but maybe just pick one of of the three. Uh, starting from Alessandro, and then we, we. I will be very fast. I think we need a cultural change because if you don't trust in your in people and you don't invest in a new kind of cyber education, I promise you, you will spend a lot of money from digital forensics activities, which, is, which are much more expensive than caring people uh, education in terms of education and uh, preparing for some attacks that it's not... Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Matteo? I'm seconding what he's saying. Cybersecurity is a cultural thing. It should be approached holistically great words, but also from a multi-perspective, because it's not just a matter of zero and one, it's a matter that should involve different stakeholders at, at, at different levels. Carlos, you can also tell us where can we take your, have your book. Yeah, the book is there, by the way. Perfect, good. <laughs> but uh, but um, just on, uh, on, on, the, on your point and, and uh, Jules yes, Berg's point, um, we, we protect something like 20,000 client wise key. We provide technology to something like uh, 500 banks. The, the number one threat uh, on banks uh, is not uh, the billion dollar you're going to buy of cyber security as, as JP Morgan did uh, two years ago. But it, it is the people, it's the people working in the bank. Uh, it, we are in a situation where we don't clean our teeth, everybody, we work to work, right? So we are doing the same thing. We don't have a cyber security hygiene. So we are installing apps in mobile phones that we bring to work, and we have our email, corporate email at the same mobile phone. The apps handle data, extract data, sends to hackers. So we need to have a very basic uh, hygiene on not bringing your personal problems data compromises into your corporative security area. And you should forbidding everybody to bring your phones into, into the company. Or get an encrypted phone. We sell them, by the way. So you can get one. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but we did it actually not because I want to sell phones. I did it because I wanted to use it myself. But, but my point is uh, personal cyber security has to be before corporate cyber security, before national cyber security. If you don't solve the personal issue, you don't solve anything. Paolo? Yeah, never, never try to solve your problems alone. Do it in cooperation. Uh, make, uh, ask for aid. And let's start really cooperating public-private immediately. Not waiting anymore. Pascal? So, yes, you're right. We are too slow. Uh, I don't want you to, to take away. I don't want, so, yes, we are too slow. Uh, I don't want you to take away the idea that cybersecurity, 100% cybersecurity exists. So the only way is to mitigate the risk by, you know, looking at the behavior of the user, by also being able to detect, you know, incident, be able to respond, be able to uh, to put a design, a security design, and resilience in the design of the things, and by sharing, and. Doing this, we are going to reduce the risk at the level that is acceptable, but the risk will always exist. Like when you take your car, you are always the risk, you know, to have, you know, a deadly uh, accident. Hello, it, please. You have less risk when you're flying than when you're driving. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I echo pretty much the sentiment of, of everyone here. Uh, but to your, to your question, I, I do think there are advancements in technology that will make a difference. I think, sadly, we'll, we will always be catching up because of all the discussions we've had here. Uh, they are organized, we are not, so until that happens, we're always catching up. But I think at the end of the day, if we at least raise the awareness to a higher level than it has been, and perhaps it's a blessing in disguise that we've had these gigantic hacks, like the uh, Marriott hack as, a, as an example. Uh, people will start to take this uh, seriously. And it, it, cybersecurity has to be something that's just embedded into the design of, of any company or any network. It's, it's like oxygen at the end of the day. Yes. And the risk of not having it, just go ask Target and some of these companies what it did to their market cap, their brand reputation. So the price of not doing the right things uh, far outweighs the costs of, of proper cybersecurity. Yelena? Uh, like every bank, we are under attack every single day, uh, multiple times. I can uh, 
proudly report to you that last year our cybersecurity center counted 100% of attacks using artificial intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence to a greatest extent. Of course, we uh, have seven major labs that all work, including to address the cybersecurity risks. But among those, artificial intelligence is probably the leading one where uh, there is an ongoing an analytics of uh, activities sorting suspicious activities and I think this can be extrapolated to any other application within the uh, financial industry and uh, I will be happy to put uh, those of you who are interested together with our cybersecurity center and collaborate with all the members of our wonderful panel. All right, my name is Marco Pasalia, I'm not a journalist, I'm Swiss politicians, we sent and I tried to do <laughs> the best. Wow. Thank you.